Hello everyone, um, I'm Dale and Sharon Walker, pastors here at Art for the World Church, and we wanted to welcome you to our church and share just a little bit about our journey with you. Uh, this is especially for you who are, who are new or visiting, and we want to really invite you to consider coming and being a part. We've already decided that we like you and uh, we'd, we'd just love to have you as a part of our church. In fact, we've prayed for people just like you that God would send you so that we could really make a big difference in our city and in our world. Um, just by way of introduction, I wanted to let Sharon tell you a little bit about us. My, my name is Sharon and um, Dale and I, we've been married for 36 years and we started a church in El Paso and pastored there for 20 years and we were very young. I'm so surprised anyone came to our church and now we're getting kind of old and we're surprised you're coming. <laughs> but anyway, um, we were having our second baby when we started our church in El Paso. So I was 20 years old, Dale was 22. Now we have uh, six children and they're all grown and um, we're getting ready to have 15 grandchildren. I know that's hard to believe, but we do have a lot of kids. And we've lived here in Cruces for 15 years, came out here and started this church. And you know, it's just been one of the greatest things of our life. We love living out here, love the community of Las Cruces, love the people of Las Cruces. And it was just a really great move. And um, of course, we still love all the people in El Paso, always will be knitted together. Um, but just really like being out here and, um, you know, it's a great adventure and journey that we're on together. Now, Heart for World Church is Christ-centered, Bible-believing, Spirit-filled, evangelical church. I like to say we're just ordinary people with an extraordinary God who wants to do extraordinary things through people just like you and me. Um, we, as you'll find out, value just being very real. We often say imperfect people are perfectly welcome here. In fact, if you're perfect, you probably won't feel very comfortable here. We try our best to just be honest about our journey because we want God to change us. And we want people to know this is a safe place if you're hurting, it's a safe place to get healed. It's a safe place to grow and to let God use you as, as more than you could have ever imagined. Um, as our name indicates, we are a church that's really passionate about God's heart for the nations. We call this Heart for the World, a neighborhood church on a worldwide mission. And probably one of the key distinctions of our church is this audacious, extravagant commitment for those around the world who've never heard of Jesus for the first time and for the poor. And we, we say our calling is to give our very best for those who have the very least. Very early in our, in our journey, uh, when God first was calling us, we were very surprised that he called us to Heart for the World uh, to plant the church here in Las Cruces. As Sharon mentioned, not only were we uh, pastors, but we had really developed this vision for missions and traveling especially to the Philippines and other places and thought perhaps we're gonna move and be missionaries. And uh, God really made it clear that we weren't to leave the church, we were to take the church. And that he wanted to start a church for the poor. He wanted to start a church so that we could be a blessing to those who have the least. So that we could literally raise up this army of compassion, which is you, people just like you, who together would, uh, would change the world. 
Uh, we started in 1997, and uh, you know, the Bible talks about don't despise the days of, of small beginnings. And you know, when, when the Lord first began to tug it at our hearts about coming to Las Cruces, He spoke several times, visions and dreams, um, about some pretty remarkable things. Things like he said, this would be the land of your anointing. It would be a land of, of favor for you. One of the stories I'll mention is, is that even moving out here, Sharon had always kind of loved the idea of living in the country. And even us finding a house was sort of a, a sign of God's favor. So I'm going to let Sharon just say something about that. Well, it's crazy that Dale wants me to say that, but Dale was... Uh, going to the Philippines and we have been driving around out here in Cruces and all the surrounding areas maybe for almost a year just looking for that you know mysterious country house <laughs> that we didn't know really what we were looking for but when we saw it we knew that would be it and so um, so when we were driving around we found this one acre piece of land and you know, at the time, we're well, we still are with our life, really. We're commuting between El Paso and here, but it seemed like a really great piece of land because it was kind of not quite in Cruces, but not in El Paso, right near the Mesquite area. And so much of the property that we had looked at, you know, you had to buy five acres, 10 acres. This was one acre, and it just looks so country and so when we found that we were like yes that's it well then Dale was leaving the next day for the Philippines and so he says Sharon if you can figure out how to get it and figure out what to do then you know God bless you and so he took off to the Philippines and you know I, I got together with my daddy and I said daddy you know and we started talking about it and and uh, we were able to figure out how we were gonna buy this one acre piece of land and then what do you do with this one acre piece of land you know we don't build houses but in New Mexico you know you can be your own contractor and so I got to be the contractor which is ludicrous because I know nothing about building houses but anyway you know we've been in our house for 15 years and and it's just this great country house and the house we had in El Paso it sold quickly within weeks and and um, and yeah, it was just a pretty crazy God story. But so there we are, you know, we always say our house is kind of in the middle of nowhere in the country, what we dreamed of, but uh, easy to get here and easy to get to El Paso. As I mentioned during those, those days, the Lord gave some remarkable vision. He says, you know, because you have built my house in the nations, it had been going for many years, I'm gonna build this house and my favor is going to be on it. And I felt very early, I remember a dream of the Pan Am Center someday, which we're still waiting to see, that we will hold a service there and fill it up with those that God has brought us. Uh, gave us words like that this place in Las Cruces would be like the belt buckle of a ministry that would surround the world. And it's a good thing the Lord gave those visions because as I said, we began, there was really about five of us and after a few months more came and then after a few months more i remember the night that we had grown the church back down to three people at the service and uh, i said this is this going to happen but after about a year in 1997 we moved to the hilton and then several little places the sea valley rec center a uh, place on North Main and, and eventually to Idaho. And though it was a small group, uh, God just began to do some extraordinary things with that small group. We uh, began doing a mission called Extreme Mission where we'd invite youth around the country and as many as 400 would come down once a year and go into Mexico. Uh, about that time, uh, Sharon had had a vision before in El Paso of a harvest party on Halloween. And uh, I want to just her to tell you a little bit about that, what God's done with that. Well, our harvest party, you know, we've been doing it a really long time because we did it in El Paso. Um, but, you know, 
I know there's always two sides to the story. There's, you know, there's the one side that says we don't celebrate Halloween at all, and then there's the side that says, of course we celebrate. And um, I, th I think maybe it was just, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a whisper that came to my heart that, that you know, October 31st, it's the day the Lord is made, and let's make a party out of it. And you know, what better time to invite the community to this great God party than Halloween night? Everyone's out partying and all kinds of crazy costumes. Invite them in. They need Jesus. And so that was just kind of how the harvest party, you know, all started forming. And it's just kind of gotten bigger and bigger. And, and, um, and so one, one time years back after the harvest party, this lady wrote me a note. And it was her first harvest party that she got to really serve at. And um, in the note, she was just thanking us. And she just said, you know, it was just, it was a party where all the witches and warlocks and goblins were welcome and God's presence was clearly there. And that's what really the value of the Harvest Party is. We say it's the funnest and safest and most God-filled event on Halloween night. And you know, it's not just it's about, about fun, we really believe in bringing the gospel. And, uh, and it's always in a really fun, unique way. And um, our Harvest Party start with the gospel and end with the gospel, and it's geared to you know, maybe four, five, six-year-old level, but there isn't an adult that doesn't love it because it's so fun and funny. And, and it all always sums up with the heart and asking Jesus to come into your heart. And then in between those shows, we have fun and, you know, there's games and there's food and there's just every, everybody's out being uh, the hands and feet of Jesus. And really the, the thing that I think of most is just where it says, you know, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary use words. And that really sums up the Harvest Party, that, that just the kindness, the mercy, the love, um, the expression of Jesus, the, the gospel that's presented in such a simple way, it really is preaching the gospel. And when, you, when necessary, we use words. And the cool thing is, is that it's all free. And, you know, we serve a couple thousand people and we try to give our best. We do all beef hot dogs, we try to do name brand, you know, candy and sodas, and really to where you take the time to look at someone in the eye and, and you tell them that, you know what, you matter. And, uh, and Jesus did, he did it all for you, and you really matter. So that's just the value of the Harvest Party, and it hasn't changed one bit all these years. It's, it's, still, it's still the hands and feet of Jesus to a very broken community. And at the same time, from the beginning, the church just wedded both the missions and the local. Um, we, we like to say we have our home game and away game, but it's the same game. And about the beginning of the church, 98, 99, God especially broke our hearts for hungry kids. And I remember one particular instance I was in the Philippines in a cemetery, and literally there were these people who lived in the cemetery sleeping on the slabs, the grave slabs, and all of these children. And we were there giving out candy and, and doing a, a outreach. And I'll never forget this one little girl, about three years old, she came and held up her arms to me, and I picked her up and held her in my arms, and kissed her and I said, oh, love you, baby, and I prayed for her and I started to put her down. But there was no way. I mean, she literally grabbed my neck and refused to let go. Um, I ended up preaching a sermon with a little girl around my neck and playing the guitar. And afterwards, it was so clear the Lord was speaking to me. What would you do if that was one of your daughters? I have four of them. And I said, I would do anything. And I felt like the Lord said, the reason I sent you all the way here to the Philippines was for her, to show the Father heart of God. And from that, we were stirred to do something and helped a church begin a feeding program for those kids. And 
miraculously God provided the funds. And to this day, uh, some 2,000 children are being fed in the Philippines, Mexico, Africa, Zambia. And we're miraculously, God has multiplied so that we every day are feeding children around the world. About the turn of, uh, of the millennium, around 2000, the Lord really put a vision in our heart for a building, for a ministry center. And we were a small group, and I remember we started collecting offerings, and uh, Bruce Jackson was our treasurer, and he would tell the people, we're going to build a great building someday. And after two years, we had saved, I think, $10,000. And we were looking for land, and the Lord spoke to him. And I remember how funny it was, because um, he said, I think the Lord told me we're supposed to give our $10,000 away to a missionary. And sure enough, that was confirmed by our small group. And with that was like a seed, you know. And short time later, way more than that, we had been able to raise and were able to purchase these 12 acres up off of high, high, Highway 70. And we were excited. We we're going to build a ministry center by faith. But little did we know, we'd run into all kinds of uh, brick walls. The lady next to us refused to sell us a little bit of an easement so we could put a road to our land. And without that road, we couldn't build. So year after year, I'm just asking, Lord, why? We're trying to, <laughs> to do this. And I remember we had drawn up the plans for a church building about 12,000 square feet and all of that. And then about 2004, five in there, someone told us that this property that we're now in, which at that time belonged to the First Assembly of God, was, was going to up for sale as they were going to move their church. And they, they suggested we come and look at this building. And I'll never forget walking in. I was just overwhelmed by the size that, you know, this building is like 34,000 square feet, you know, three times what we, you know, what we had and twice what we had dreamed. And was just going to say, no, we can never do this. And I remember Sharon said, don't give up so quick. You ought to pray about it. And I'll never forget, as we prayed about it, God just confirmed that he would do a miracle. In order to get this, we would have to come up with $500,000 down, which we didn't have in a very short period of time. And as we were praying about it, a builder in the city called about the other land that we had bought. And we had bought it fairly cheap for just a couple hundred thousand dollars. And he said, we would like to buy your land from you. How much would you sell it for? So of course I said, well, $500,000. And they said, we'll take it on the spot. And God provided that miracle of the down payment. And in 2008, what a great celebration when, when we moved into this building. We were just in awe, amazed at what God had provided for us. Um, through the next few years, the Lord has really grown, doubled the church, the uh, 2010 was kind of another special milestone. The Lord began to speak to us from the beginning all the way through. He says, I want you to ask audacious, bold prayers for the nations. I'm going to do for you things you can't imagine. And I was in the Philippines, and we were ministering to a number of tribal pastors from way up in the mountains. Some had never been in the city before. I remember them riding on an escalator for the first time. They freaked out. They had never even done that. And I saw these 20 or so pastors and the Lord says, that's your inheritance. Ask me. And then suddenly that night as I slept there, I be woke up and the Lord began to say that I'm going to do something incredible. He says, I'm going to use you. And he showed me a picture of these aqueducts going to all the nations of the world and spoke that over the next 10 years, we called it our 2020 vision, <laughs> that we would end up partnering, supporting, standing with 600 what we call hidden heroes 
in all parts of the world and that through them God would allow us to touch a billion people in some way either through hearing the word the gospel being empowered to feed their families showing the love of Christ this amazing vision he gave us with the picture that this church would be like a storehouse God's hardware store <laughs> and that he would begin to bring people services goods resources and through this church he would equip these these heroes i remember the words of winston churchill that that really moved me during world war ii he said the troops there on the front line they can do the job but they have to have the tools and the lord just said this church is going to be a, a conduit a channel to put in the hands of people that will touch especially those one billion who live on less than a dollar a day and since then over and over we have seen god do amazing things during that time i also had the opportunity to travel with my brother tommy and preach the gospel to tens of thousands of people in places like the philippines and zambia africa and and see that this was such a part of our inheritance later what we're so excited about now is that we've been able to provide evangelists that are nationals that are just simple people but are such anointed evangelists with equipment such as solar powered uh, amplifying equipment and even solar powered bibles to give out to, to people in in villages where they can't read and i think of just one amazing uh, evangelist that we're now able to help who in three years has gone around and shown the Jesus film with the equipment we provided and has seen over 70,000 people make decisions for Christ. What a privilege to see God bring us together with these partners who are going to help us change the world. Just this year we had our first what we call our day of jubilee which we would give our entire offering away to help people here in our community and around the world. And in that one Sunday, we had the largest offering we've ever had, over $27,000. We were able to build a church in Southern Mexico, help hundreds of people here in Las Cruces, get motorcycle for a missionary. And God has shown us over and over that he would do unbelievable things through this church. Even as we are right now in a process of of what we call giving the word project to get 10,000 people who never had the word of God a Bible in the next few months. This has become kind of what I would say at our heart uh, of our value, extreme generosity and compassion. Let me just have some of the staff mention a couple of other things that just define us as a church, what I would call our core values, what we're all about. And again, I'll let Sharon start just with kids. Well, we really love kids here at Heart for the World. And, um, you know, our value here is the funnest, the safest, the most God-filled hour of a kid's week. And the, the team here that does our kids team, I would have to say that they're unsung heroes. You know, they come week in and week out, so dedicated, so faithful, and all of them are so intentional about keeping your kids safe, keeping their time fun and God-filled. And um, it's one of our prayers here, you know, is that, that we would see God wonders among the kids and that we would have Holy Spirit moments here among the kids. And, and we're seeing glimpses of it happen. And there's no age group too small or too large for that. And, um, you know, this is just a very great, warm place to put your kids. And uh, I feel very humbled that I get to be a part of this larger team that really makes this uh, a Kingdom Kid experience. Hi, my name is Chris Cohn, and I feel so blessed and honored to serve here at Heart for the World on the Compassion Team. Uh, I often get to take teams and be a part of teams where we're serving children here in our neighborhood, 
and in the nations of the world. Specifically in Zambia, I've had the opportunity to serve there many times. And every time that we stretch out our arms in compassion, I've just seen Jesus meet us in unbelievable ways and bless those that we're serving. But I've also had my heart changed because of compassion. Uh, I believe that Jesus has a special place in his heart for the hurting, for the broken, for the lost, for the orphan, for the widow, the outcast. And uh, it is our passion to bring the best, the, the best we have to offer and give it to the least of these by the world's standards. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to a world that was dirty, broken, and he came and gave everything he had, his life, his blood, and his hope of a future to us who didn't deserve it. And that's what we're doing. So Heart for the World, be encouraged as you reach out in compassion. And I just pray that in 2013, uh, the compassion pulse rate of this church will go up to another level, that more people would be blessed and that our hearts would be filled to overflowing. Because when you allow yourself to be a vessel through which compassion flows, you get the best blessing of all. God bless you. Hi, my name is Jason Walker. Here at Heart for the World, we have a high value on extreme generosity. Each month we take what we call our compassion offering, where we send money from that offering all around the world. We're helping a ministry in the Philippines feed over a thousand kids every month. We're helping another ministry in Zambia, Africa, serve 400 orphans by giving them education and food. And another ministry in Juarez we're helping out with food needs for those that are unemployed or victims of the violence. Our church really cares about the poor. And one of the ways that we think that God wants to use us even more is by raising the level of our stewardship. You know, God has called us to be faithful stewards with our time, our talent, and our treasure. And we're looking for people to help us find resources, raise funds, and even help people be accountable for what God has given them so that God can give even more through our church to the nations of the world. You know, on the final day, we all want to hear Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful with your time, your treasure, and your talent. Well done. Hey everybody, I'm JT, one of the pastors here at Heart for the World Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And one of the ways we do this is we emphasize what's called life groups. Life groups are simply small groups of people that gather throughout the week on different days and times to get together and to read scriptures, to worship and to pray. And so that is our goal and our mission. We say that we wanna create a light in every neighborhood meaning that we want every congregation member here at Heart for the World to be connected in life groups because we really feel and believe that that's where true, authentic community happens. That's where you get cared for and you belong to a community of people that's praying for you and supporting you and encouraging you on your journey in Christ. And it's where you learn to grow spiritually through worship, through reading God's Word, and through prayer. Hi, I'm Sue Yeager and I'm representing Kingdom. Kingdom is the healing and recovery ministry in our church. Jesus said that he came to bring liberty to the captives. And you know, Jesus wants you to be whole and so do we. And so this ministry is aimed at helping, uh, helping people get through their hangups or their hurts or any kind of a habit that would keep you from entering into or keep you held back in any way from all that Jesus has for you. And we do this through a freedom class. We're centering in this around our freedom class. And then we follow that up with our encounter retreats. Here at Heart for the World Church, we place a very high value on young people, realizing that they are called to be on the front lines of serving here in our church. We're Hunter and Liz Howard, and we're the leaders of Momentum Youth Movement, or MYM, Heart for the World's ministry for college and high school students. Our students are leaders in formation, and they provide the church with passion and energy. And soon, they will be the leaders taking the gospel to the world. They will move the church forward to expand the kingdom of God in this and future generations. So, at MYM, 
we have a threefold vision to reach, disciple, and revive. Number one, reach. We aim to reach out to our generation and lead young people to Christ. We have life groups that meet weekly in homes, on campuses, and in different places with the purpose of getting together and reaching out to others. Number two, disciple. At MYM, our main focus is discipleship. We feel we have a mandate to raise up passionate, radical, committed followers of Jesus Christ who grow up and mature in their relationship with Christ and are ready and equipped to face every challenge life throws at them. Life groups are the main way discipleship happens. In our life groups, we have fellowship and develop strong friendships that make discipleship happen. We also have a weekly youth service on Saturday evenings for the purpose of discipleship. Every Saturday, we meet at 5.30 for prayer and at 6.30 for discipleship classes. Another very important event we do at MYM is Encounter. An Encounter is a weekend experience with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's just a wonderful time to experience the power of God and the main point of the encounter is to give new disciples a jump start in their life of discipleship. And number three, revive. We believe that the result of reaching out and discipling young people is that we'll see a great revival in this generation. We're believing to see the hand of God move powerfully to bring many multitudes to Christ and for many to experience the power of God to forgive, heal, set free, and restore. So, if you're a high school or college student, we would love to get to know you and give you more information about MYM. The other big thing this year was the launch of what we call our Campus Vision. And this year, um, we began a campus service in El Paso, uh, joining with Heart for the World, Phil Am Church, to the beginning of a vision. By the way, these precious people in El Paso are just one part of our church. Junar and Jasmine Lasala have done a, a great job and we have now a church there of nearly 200 people. And I would love for, for Junar and Jasmine just to give a, a quick testimony of, of what God's doing there. Hi, my name is Junar. And I'm Jasmine. We pastor the Heart for the World here in El Paso and we are so grateful and really thankful to God for what he what he's been doing here with us and of course we are a church that reach out not only to the communities but to the nations and being a part of this great ministry you know we are so excited what God has more for us here in El Paso we are a part what you guys are doing over there. We share the same uh, vision, same, same uh, um, heart. We have the same DNA. So we do, do everything like as one, but in different location. So we are so grateful that, that God is doing great things here with us. We actually uh, share the same message also and just the same ministry. And El Paso is unique in a way that it is very close to um, Juarez and we have a very strong connection with our Juarez outreach and ministry. And just living the vision that God has put in, heart, in the heart of Pastor Dale, uh, being a church without walls. And you know, um, we are really excited because uh, in this new series that we are doing, we were able to form nine life groups and they are meeting in Northeast El Paso, East El Paso, in fact, as far as Fort Hancock. And just just so exciting that God's word is being shared as far as Fort Hancock. And the congregation is uh, very excited and growing. And we would like to thank you for having us and allowing us to be part of what God is doing in the whole world. And we'd like to congratulate the whole of Heart for the World, you know, for the anniversary, and we believe that greater things are still to come for this ministry. Let us continue to move forward. We are in this together, a big team, big family. We are supporting Dale and what the Lord is uh, putting in his heart for this. And again, we congratulate Heart for the World, and God bless you all. The campus vision was the idea that 
what the Lord has invested in us in these 35 years, as far as vision, resources, um, capacity, could now be used to help campuses be started, not only in El Paso, but possibly all over the world, to where we could become one church, literally a church without walls, a meeting in all kinds of venues. We are very excited because already we have started this Spanish service to become a congregation, to become like a campus, and then through our website to be able to broadcast to all the Spanish speakers in the world could, could hear the same messages. Uh, we're very excited about this and how God's going to multiply it in the coming years. As I close, I just want to answer the question, so how do all these visions come true? How do we become a light in every neighborhood and a witness to every nation? How do the poorest of the poor by the thousands in the millions have their lives transformed? How do kids and youth grow up to be radical, passionate followers of Jesus here among us? How do we transform families? How do we make this a kingdom place where breakthroughs happen every week? Every week people are coming to Christ. Every week people are healed and Families are put back together and emotions are, are healed and addictions are broken. You know, how do we see God's glory come to Las Cruces, El Paso, in ways that it hasn't through us? And I just want to close with what we're going to be talking about in our campus series, the 101 to 501, our membership class that we would love everyone to go through. But we call it just the seven principles of being a church of Acts. You know, the book of Acts talks about the great early church, and in that second chapter, there are seven principles that we believe define our church, our priorities of our church, that will take us to being a world-changing church. And these are the, the, the priorities we are trying to get all of us to share. Number one is passionate worship. Worship that invites the presence of God. Number two is experiencing the awesome presence of God in an environment of faith where miracles can happen. It says in Acts 2 that the people were in awe and signs and wonders were happening among the people. Number three is people being devoted to the Word of God and prayer. We so value the priority of prayer and of every member becoming word women and word men, uh, living their life in the word. Number four is their fellowship. They met not only in the temple, but from house to house. They loved each other. They became forever friends, uh, rejoicing when they rejoiced and weeping with each other and becoming knit together as true lifelong friends. Number five, was their commitment to the poor. There were no needy people among them. They were generous. They were caring. They took care of the sick and the orphan and the widow and the homeless. And we want to be known as the church with a heart in this community that cares for those who are the least or who are the hurting the most. The next one is to just be a church of unity. There were people from all nations in that church, from all over the world. And we are committed to being a church of people who are the first ones to cross the aisle, to step across the barrier, whether that's racially or socioeconomically, denominationally. We are Christians whose unity is based on the Lordship of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And we long to bring this inclusive fellowship uh, of people in our city that would represent our whole city and all the kind of people that are going to be before the throne of God as our goal. And then what I would call being a church that equips and sends strategically people to the nations of the world. We want to be a church passionate about the fulfilling of the Great Commission that every person on our planet 
would get to hear about Jesus. And we want to be a church that, like that early church, scattered and went everywhere to all the nations of the world, whether that's through sending people or whether that's supporting people, whether that's su being partners with some of these amazing hidden heroes that we've mentioned. We want to do everything within our power to be a church that's really for the nations. In fact, I wanted to introduce you just to a couple of our partners around the world as they greet us. And you have that sense of this worldwide community called Heart for the World Church. Hello, my name is uh, Damas Kamfa. I'm the pastor for uh, Ndola Vineyard uh, Christian Fellowship here in Zambia. Uh, I just want to wish you a 15th happy anniversary, Heart for the World, and in particular, Dale Walker and Sharon. Uh, let me just give a little bit of a background uh, what Heart for the World has done for us here in Zambia. I came to know Dale in the year 2001, and at that time we were just a small church and trying to find our feet in the community. Uh, particularly, we were so passionate about doing feeding programs and helping the orphans. You need to know that uh, most of our people in Zambia, particularly kids, most of them are double orphans, uh, as a result of HIV AIDS, and some parents have just died. And as we were thinking of doing uh, that, we bumped into their worker who came and said, why don't we start doing a feeding program at your house? And we decided to go in one of our communities. And when we started, we were amazed and surprised by a huge response that we got from the community of those that came wanting to be part of the program. And we started that program since then. And what we've seen is that we started with kids that were eight years old, uh, uh, nine years, 10 years. Today, the, most of them, they are over 20 years. But what is exciting about it that we've been able to take over 300 kids to school since two zero, uh, 2001 and most of these they were double orphans. I can mention some other important things that have happened is that uh, most of my leaders that I have today came through the program Heart for the World, the feeding program that we've been doing in this community. Uh, I remember uh, one lady when she came, she was in a verge of committing suicide because she didn't know anything to do. Her husband has just deserted her and she had these eight kids. She didn't know where to take them. So she told a lie when she came to us. She told us that uh, she, didn't, she was a widow. But in the process, as we taught the word of God and she brought the kids to the feeding program, she told us the truth that actually she was not a widow. It's just that she was deserted, abandoned, and she was feeling left out. She was about to commit suicide. But we told her the truth, and through that, she gave her life to Jesus and the entire household. Today, she's one of our leaders, and all our kids are grown up. So we see that huge impact that has happened. But not only that, if I were to be honest, most of the feeding program, 99 percentage that are done here in Indola, were introduced by Heart for the World. It was a result of Heart for the World coming to Zambia, going out in the community, doing program in the community with the hospitals, with doctors, uh, all the medical outreaches that we did, the feeding program brought a sensitization to a number of leaders, they saw the need that we are not only to preach the gospel, but would be like what the apostle Peter reminded Paul, that whatever you do, remember the poor. And so there was that sensitization that was brought to the pastors, and most of the pastors, they are doing feeding program as a result of what Heart for the World brought here uh, in Zambia. So we are grateful. We want just you to know that Heart for the World has left a mark and it's continuing growing here in Zambia, in Africa. Not only have they impacted in dollar, now they've gone to other cities, to other towns, to other provinces, reaching out to the pastors, reaching out to the vulnerable, equipping us. It's a holistic ministry. So we are grateful each time you send the teams. We are grateful because we are being impacted. And uh, we just want to wish you the best and long live and go to supply more as you celebrate your 15th anniversary. May God bless you. Amen. I'm a pastor of New Hope Christian Center. And I want to say happy 15th anniversary for Heart for the World. I'm excited that I can be part of this celebration. 
And uh, this is because Heart for the World has really impacted my life. From the time I got connected with Heart for the World, I remember it was in 2003, 2004 when I attended conferences by Heart for the World and I met Dale Walker, whose teachings impacted me, made a lot of change in my life. And uh, one day Dale Walker visited this place. That time this was a small place. When Dale Walker came, he saw that we were lacking in a lot of things. We were just thinking of starting a feeding program, but we didn't have the resources of how to go about it. And uh, we told him our needs and that time we didn't even have a toilet for this facility and he told us that he was going to send us the money so that we build that toilet and immediately when he went back to United States after two weeks he sent us the money and we built a toilet that time it was a pit latrine and the rest of the money was used to paint the buildings in this place and uh, not only that he introduced me to another organization that started to help us with the feeding program. So I just want to say happy 15th anniversary for Heart for the World. We are excited to be connected to Heart for the World. Thank you. Uh, the good news is that uh, this is the 50th anniversary for Heart for the World. And I wish on behalf of my wife Flavia, on behalf of Mapalo Vineyard Christian Fellowship of Ndola, Zambia, uh, wish Heart for the World all the best, God's blessings, and may they reach out to more and more. We are talking of millions, more and more millions uh, with this uh, mission work and with the good work that Heart for the World is doing all over the world. May God bless you, may God provide you with the resources, may God provide you with the personnel, and may God bless each and everyone involved in Heart for the World. We love you and we shall continue to love you. We love to work with you. Please remember us at all times. We are your partners and we are available for you. May you please continue with the good work and touch the entire world because Jesus Christ has a heart for the entire world. That's why he died for the entire world. And the good work of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, is manifesting through you. You are touching the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you so much for listening and for being a part of it and God bless you.